Hello, welcome back. Let's take a look at all the new minions. I again haven't seen any of these yet, so uh, first impressions. And again, I'm going to try and give them a rating as best as I can. So Oozling Gladiator is a tier 2 minion. It has 1 attack, 2 health. A battle cry, get 2 slimy shields that give plus 1, plus 1, and taunt. So I assume it's going to be random. I don't think you can... Maybe you can target twice, but I'm... I'm it doesn't say random on the card. I'm not 100% sure. But basically, it's a 3-4... A, a for a two drop and it gets two taunts uh so it's really good setup if you want to go taunt comp or whatever uh, it's actually not a horrible buff compared to mug mug gets plus three plus three but you need three different tribes this does not need any sp anything specifically you just get the plus two plus two guaranteed and the stat line on it is a, a little i mean it's a one two so technically when you look purely at stats it's worse than mug it's a neutral as well i feel like it's very niche i feel like it's something you could Play occasionally if you can make good use of this but uh, i'm gonna give it a two i think um yeah it's nothing crazy it's just something maybe okay to pick up iron groundskeeper this is a tier three five six neutral again give a minion taunt if it already has it remove its taunt oh wow i feel like so many people including myself have been asking about give us a card that can remove taunt because sometimes you taunt something to buff it up and then the end game uh, people just play a Leroy and suddenly your biggest unit has no value. So the ability to remove taunt is massive. I really like this. It also has a big stat line. Like even if you just power level or you're early on tier 3, like a 5-6 is pretty good. And the, the fact that it gives taunt just okay, it's good, right? But yeah, the removing taunt is an ability that uh, will definitely change up mostly the end game end games are going to be way more mind gamey now for a rating i'm going to give this a four it is not come defining you don't need it to win the game or to do something strong or scale or anything like that uh, it is just a super good tech card i guess and a really good stat line so you can even play it just naked if you're uh, in need for some early tempo living constellation a tier three really interesting art it's a four two neutral again uh, battle cry give a minion plus one plus one for each type you control so it's like a concentrated mug with potential upside. Uh, let me elaborate. Let's say you have three types as well. It's still going to be plus three plus three. But instead of onto those three minions, you can put it onto any minion you want. It doesn't have to have the tribe. It can be a neutral as well. It can be a deflecto. So if you play menagerie, this is really good. You can just like kind of stack this on a cleave, for example, add your menagerie card. Now, I like it. Uh, the fact that it's tier three though and a four two, it's pretty slow early on because usually you only have like at most three tribes, so often two or something like that. Uh, but it's okay. It, it, again, it's stacks with Bran if you're playing something like Menagerie it's really good and the fact that you can buff anything and stack the buffs instead of have them spread which usually is useless anyway because you sell those cards I like it I'm gonna give it a free I think it's a nice nicely put in the middle spot it's not broken it's not necessary it's it's okay it has potential fairy tale caroler I don't know what this means if I pronounce it correctly but that's the name it's another neutral so they're, they're just revealing all the neutrals first uh, a 4 drop, 2-4, really bad stat line for a 4 drop. Battle cry, if you lost your last combat, give your other minions plus 2 plus 1. Isn't that like the demon? I think there's like a demon, I think it's a free drop, that gives your other demons plus 2 plus 1 if you lost the last combat. So now, anyone can make use of that effect, but on all of your cards, you don't just buff demons. But it's a 4 drop and a 2-4, so it's okay. I don't think it's like insanely good, actually. I'm gonna give it a 2 uh, maybe even a 1. Like, this is okay to pick up early. You know, if you're power leveling, you made it to tier 4, you already have a full board, you lost your fight, okay. But that's mostly it. It's not amazing. Maybe in the end game, uh, if you have like a brand on the board, plus 4, plus 2 on your entire board, it's not nothing. It's It could be relevant. But yeah, not uh, a massive fan. Then we have free flying feather main. Okay, this is a beast, no more neutrals. A tier 3, 5-5. Five, five. Pretty good stat line already right on the bat. Uh, after a friendly beast dies, summon this from your hand for this combat only. You can keep this in hand, uh, you don't have to play it, and uh, you basically play with 8 minions instead of 7. It's only a 5-5 five -five though, but wait, this minion will be summoned once there is board space. Okay, so you can't just uh, have something summoned and then this can't summon because of rats, for example, spawning in. You will always get value out of this if a beast dies. 
so yeah, this is, I guess, good if you have like Ma Bears and um, Banana Slammas on the board. I don't know which card is going to be removed yet. Maybe Banana Slamma gets removed, but let's just say hypothetically for now. Um, this is just good if you have like a summon comp and you need more shit coming from hand. It's kind of like Basgill, but for beasts. Uh, the only thing is, I, I wish you could buff this up first before putting it in hand. I mean, there is ways to buff stuff with the Murloc, so I guess you could make a really big Feather main and just literally play with 8 minions, which is really cool because you don't even need to be playing... I think it's Basgill, the Murloc that summons from hand, which often is pretty weak. No, you can just play massive beasts, and then once one of those massive beasts dies and you have board space, another massive beast gets summoned. Uh, yeah, I think this, this is going to be an insane card. I'm going to give it 5 stars. It just seems like it has so much potential upside. A tier 6 beast now. Well, that's really sick art as well. New Zhao. Again, I, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. I'm just going to call it New Zhao for now. It's a 7-6. Whenever this attacks, deal damage equal to its attack to another random enemy minion. So it's like a cleave, but instead of dealing its damage to the two adjacent minions, which opponents can play around, but you can also get more value out of, it instead is to a random enemy minion, something no one can play around. So if you have like a, a new Zhao with, let's say, 40 attack, the attacks into a taunt, the 40 attack could go anywhere else uh, and just kill a good card for free, like a Baron that maybe your opponent needs. This is... Uh, the random effect is a little bit scary, but it's super interesting. If it attacks into the Van Shield, it gets no value, while with Cleave, it would, because it deals zero damage. And also, I wonder, if this randomly, like, attacks into a Leroy, I think it just dies, right? Like, if it attacks something, then the extra attack goes into Leroy. I think it just dies, so it could also be very bad for you, but uh, it's a really cool effect, something we haven't seen before. Six drop though is expensive, right? Like uh, six drops are usually things that blow up your board and scale like Goldrin used to be or Mama Bear used to be a six, uh, you know, beast that uh, are come defining. This is like more a Hydra kind of ass card, which is a tier four card or was a tier four card. So having to find this on tier six and then start scaling it, maybe it's too slow, especially since beasts don't have a lot of scaling. This probably fits better into a menagerie composition. Uh, I'm gonna give it, for that reason alone, uh, free. I think it's a really good card. I think if you can scale this up, it's amazing. But just the fact that it's a 6 drop and not something like a 5 or a 4. And a beast, meaning that, you know, you probably... It's tougher to play this in a full beast comp. It's better in a menagerie comp. It might just not see that much play. The Gladiator. <laughs> a tier 3 Naga. 1-1, one, one. okay. With Divine Shield, so not an amazing stat line. Divine Shield is interesting, though. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain plus one attack. So it just, whenever, it's kind of like Brutes on tier four. Whenever you cast a spell, it gets plus one, plus one. This only gets a plus one attack, but it's a Divine Shield card and it's on a lower tier, so you get access to it earlier. So because of that, I think it's pretty good. You just need to find a way to scale up its health. But yeah, it seems, it seems really good. It seems like a Brute because it will get guaranteed double value from the attack while Brute maybe only gets one time value of the attack if you know the health just gets traded right away uh well the divine shield might be more useful in that case so i'm gonna give this honestly a five uh very ballsy five i know but it just seems like a really good card if you are playing naga specifically if you're not playing naga or not getting spells obviously it's really bad but in that case you don't pick it up anyway <laughs> now we have dagger spine fresher a tier 3 naga it is a free five so uh, a way better stat line whenever you cast a spell gain the vine shield win free or venomous until next turn so you get a random effect whenever you cast a spell uh, I wonder if you cause free spells if you get all free effects. I think it does, right? I think it just stacks. So I think if you have this on the board and you get guaranteed like a couple spells a turn, I think you're going to have a Divine Shield win free Venom, uh, which is pretty good, I would say. Uh, it's especially since it's a tier three card, you can pick this up pretty quickly and giving it Divine Shield win free. Insane. Venomous. Also really good, even though Venomous Divine Shield doesn't have like a real clear synergy. That yeah, seems like a really good card if it works like I think it does. If you only get one of these, it's bad. Uh, I'm not just gonna say it, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, it's okay, it could get the Divine Shield, you know, but <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it's good. So I'm gonna give it a free. I'm just gonna give it a free. Pray that it works like I think it does. And in uh, some situations, it's gonna be pretty good, but... You kind of need to have a good setup for this first. Prior Back Buki is a tier 2 quill bore. 3 5 stat line, pretty decent for Tavern tier 2. If you have any unspent gold at the end of your turn, get 2 blood gems. So you get rewarded for uh, not spending all your gold, you get 2 blood gems. 
uh, which is, you know, two blood gems on tier 2, pretty good early on, but it's at a heavy cost, especially if you just play the game normally, very often you're not going to have unspent gold. But we have seen anomalies that reward you for, um, you know, having unspent gold, and there's many anomalies that shift the economy in the game, so maybe uh, with certain, like, you gotta keep that in mind with all these cards, I'm not doing that because I think in some lobbies some cards are going to be insanely good, others are going to be really bad, uh, with certain, like, I think... It's so hard to rate everything right now because of anomalies specifically, but I'm just going to rate them as if the game is vanilla, as if there's no anomalies, because I can't do it otherwise. Uh, but if there's no anomalies, I think it's going to be rough. I'm going to give it a two, uh, two blood gems for one gold trade-off every turn. It's tough if you are leveling correctly early on, you're not wasting any gold because that is just bad. Uh, it's not worth the two blood gems. But again, in certain lobbies with certain anomalies, could be really good. Merculus, a tier 2 Murloc. Oh wow, I love the art and the flavor and the name. Uh, it's a 5-2. Uh, whenever this kills a minion, give a minion in your hand plus 2 plus 2. So a different way to hand buff, I assume they're gonna remove some hand buff Murlocs then. Uh, you gotta keep this buffed up though. Like you gotta find a way to keep buffing this, because at some point if this doesn't kill cards anymore, it's gonna get zero value. It starts at 5 attack, so early on shouldn't be an issue uh, most of the time at least um, but yeah plus two plus two it can also kill multiple minions so if this becomes really big and it kills multiple minions it will keep stacking that buff in your hand um, so you could get like plus six plus six in a turn but if you get lucky that is uh, it's it's good early on i think later on this the you might only get like plus two plus two or even no stats or maybe plus four plus four it's not that relevant anymore compared to like the death rattle murloc which you could stack with baron and it's way more significant and more consistent. Um, but I think it's cool. For a 2-drop, really good. I'm going to give it a 4. You can buff anything in hand. It uh, works well with the beast that we saw earlier that you're keeping in hand. So, I, I like it. Murky, a tier 6 Murloc now. It is a 6-5 Battlecry. Give a friendly Murloc plus 1 plus 1. Improved by each Battlecry minion you play this game. So... Uh, you gotta keep track of this. I think it's gonna be tough. I think uh, I actually have no clue how many battle cries you play on average. When you play Murlocs, it's probably more, or when you play Menagerie, it's gonna be more than um, any other. But it's also give a friendly Murloc. You can't put the buff on a cleave or like the beast that we saw earlier on tier six, uh, or any card that you wish. Uh, you have to put it on a Murloc, so you have to at least keep a Murloc on board. You can't put it on itself because it's a friendly Murloc. Um, but yeah, I guess it depends on how many battle cries you've played and if you have a brand or not, so you can double it. It reminds me of the Gallywix buddy from before. For a six drop, honestly, I think it's pretty, pretty meh. Because most of the time this is useless, right? It's only good in the specific case that you're playing full Murlocs and cycling a lot of battle cries with Bran, uh, Lookout, and then even it's overkill. You might not even need this to close out the game if you're already playing so many battle cries and cycling so, so much stuff. You might not even need this. I think it's like more a card that is a win more specific buff. If this was on a lower tier, it would have been uh, way more valuable, I guess. Uh, but on tier 6, I think I have to give it a 2. Uh, which, it, it seems really interesting and really cool, but I just... I think it's a win more card. Time Saver is a tier 3 dragon. It is a 3-5 if you have any unspent gold at the end of your turn. This sells for 2 more gold. There's a lot of, like, unspent gold going on right now. Seems like that's the flavor of the, the next update. Uh, but this will sell for two more, so if you basically float one gold, this sells for two more, and wait, this stacks, I think, every turn. Yeah, so you can stack this up, so if you just float one gold every round, you will basically gain that extra gold in the future, uh, which is decent, yeah, it's okay, like, there is a leveling curve where you just go to tier... Uh, four, five, and um, you flow with the gold. Could work with that. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the tier two uh, pirate undead that with avenge gives gives you more gold. But that's avenge. This you actually need to waste gold at first. I'm not 100 sure. It might. It's a free drop as well. If this was a two drop, I think it's it's more relevant. But as a free drop, do you really want to make that trade off? I don't know. I think I'm giving it. A2. Again, it might not see any play. It might be very situational. Sometimes you get like one or two extra gold out of this. But is that worth playing a free 5 dragon on the board, right? Hunter of Gatherers is a tier 5 dragon. Free 6. After this gains attack, give your minions plus 1 health. Ooh. There is, uh, I mean, there's obvious ways to give this attack. You also have like the 5 drop dragon that has like the battle cry give 
another friendly dragon plus five attack. I'm really bad with names right now. I'm so sorry, but maybe I'll have a graphic pop up. But basically, uh, I, there is ways to buff this. You can also do that with Caligals. This is really good on the Caligals board, actually. Wow, because uh, whenever this gains attack, everything just gains health. I think it's a nice flavor. It's also a five drop, which is uh, good. That's where you know early scaling is at. I'm gonna give this a four. I think this could be really, really good, depending on. Uh, how easily this will end up it will end up buffing this i guess with certain heroes this will be better like if you have a hero power or something that attacks both this there might be other synergies i'm not thinking of that uh will attack both this as well but yeah it could be some cool uh cool stuff going on here warp wing a tier 6 dragon wait the scaligal's gone uh this is a 12 4 immune while attacking <laughs> holy what so no scaling, right? This is kind of like the beast on tier 6. It's not something that will explode your board, not something that will build it. This is just a really strong card that if you can buff this up and keep this and build around it, it's going to be insane. Like, if you play Menagerie right now, there's going to be so many good cards you can hit for Menagerie on higher tiers, so probably too late. But power leveling is going to be rewarded. Uh, well, previously with power leveling, you might find scaling, uh, but you often die trying to scale because, you know... Uh, you don't have the time for it. Right now on tier 5, 6, you can just buy cards that are insanely good. And then just, you know, start to build a board from there. Uh, although it is at 4 health, someone can just play a 4-1 attack first and this thing dies. You know, that, that's something to keep in mind. Um, if this can attack in and you have taunts to protect your board. And it can attack multiple times. This gets free damage in. Uh, this being buffed up will be... It's like an, an infinite divine shield kind of. Again... It can get killed by by things but still really interesting i will have to give it a free though because again as nice as this is to have uh no actually let's give it a four i think it's gonna be it's better than the beast on tier six we have it in a four because as nice as it is, as it is it still doesn't scale up your board you still need additional tools just having this again it can get sniped it's really tough to i think get a lot of value out of but if you get it to work it seems really oppressive wow bejeweled duelist is a tier 2 elemental 3 4 taunt whenever you refresh gain plus one health oh that's really sick so a tier 2 3 4 is already good stat line uh, and i'm reminded of molten rock which was pretty good early on you know it's a 2 4 and if you play an elemental it gains plus one health this is whenever you refresh which early on you might not refresh a lot but not freezing the tavern also comes as a refresh like the next turn the tavern is refreshed this should get the extra health for free uh this could be really good again depends on the kind of composition you're playing if you're playing something on tier 4 that cycles a lot and buffs a lot for example with bran or whatever this can snowball really quickly and it doesn't have taunts so you don't need to worry about people being able to counter it quickly i'm gonna give this a, a four i think uh, it's a pretty good card on uh, tier 2 sparkling a tier 3 elemental 5-2 again we've seen that uh, that stat line before in the tier 2 murloc Better cry give all other minions plus one plus one. Oh, all, this is just good, right? It's kind of like a spawn, but permanently. So it, it's an elemental itself, but it doesn't just buff elementals. You can buff neutrals, you can buff whatever is on your board. Uh, I would brand it doubles. So it's it's like a jug already on tier three without having any restrictions. Yeah, it's all older. It doesn't buff itself because jug gets plus two plus two to three different tribes. So you need three different tribes. Sure, the buffs are like more concentrated. Uh, but this is also plus six plus six just on your six cards on the board no restrictions with bran it's even better uh it's it's a really good card i'm gonna give it a four i think uh, people will pick this up most of the time if you have cards that you care about and just tempo wise it's insanely good it just seems like a well-rounded card emergent flame is a tier four elemental five free bell cry given elemental plus one plus one but it is improved by each refresh this turn so <laughs> honestly not good uh, like if you haven't refreshed yet or if you only roll a couple times this can be like plus three plus three plus four plus four less than the elemental that we just saw uh sure you can stack it but it's also just on an elemental not on any card that you want elementals do like refreshing a lot so maybe if you're playing like gallowix or playing recycling wraith and you get a lot of rolls and this could go up to like 10 10 maybe even 15 15 but that's like best case scenario and if you get already 15 rolls in you probably do strong shit already uh it seems super situational most of the time not that good 
uh, especially since it's only a 5-3 as well. I think I'm giving it a 2. It seems decent in the right situation, good in the right situation. But even then, like, if you play Elementals, you might only get to roll 5 or 6 times, then this is just, like, a jug, right? That's concentrated. Uh, nothing crazy. Carbonic Copy. Tier 5 Elemental. Uh, it's a 5-6 start of combat summon a copy of this minion so you will have to play with six minions you can't play a full board which is good in some sense because you always have a cycle spot yeah it's like myrmidon right you have the uh, naga that doubles the stats this is essentially that but self doubling the stats on one minion uh it copies itself which has the bonus that well it's less uh, susceptible to like poison or venomous right or leroy because myrmidon single leroy it's that now you need two depending on how big this is and divine shield if you divine shield this uh, with the naga let's say you get two divine shield minions so it does seem like a better myrmidon but you need the extra board space um which may be a stuff i'm not 100 sure i think it's good though i think i'm gonna give it a four so far i haven't really given it out i think i gave it like one five i don't think i gave out once either everything seems pretty good everything seems like uh, within two and four it seems good or bad but nothing seems super awful right now and nothing seems op broken insane uh seems like the balancing is uh so far again from what i can tell pretty good so this is just a four invento medic i actually have no clue how many more minions i have to go uh <laughs> it's a tier two mech two three whenever you magnetize a minion give it plus one plus one. Oh, that's early dude you get basically buffs for magnetics on tier 2. The thing is, how often do you find magnetics, right? Because it's on tier 4, I think, where you find stuff that generates you magnetics. Uh, like, it, it's really hard to just consistently roll and buy magnetics. And even then, it's only plus 1 plus 1. It doesn't repeat itself. It's not like every turn you get plus 1 plus 1. So this might only be like a total of plus 3 plus 3, or best case, like plus 4 plus 4, plus 5 plus 5 buff on a 2 3 mech. It's like, okay, it's kind of whatever. I'm gonna give it a 2. It's, uh, it seems like a little bit of a filler card. Adaptable Barricade is a tier 5 mech. 12-1, dude, the art is so sick again. It has taunt. Whenever this attack, it shifts its stats to survive with 1 health, if possible. This respects venomous, venomous poison, so it will die instantly. So shifting stats, I assume that... Wait, what does that mean? Oh, I know what this means. So basically, this will always survive at one health. That's really sick. So let's say it has like 100 attack and um, 50 health. And it's attacking into a minion with 60 attack. Then it's going to take from that 100 attack, I think 11. So we'll have uh, 89 attack left. It will go onto the health. So it's a 61 health. It takes a 60 damage. And it survives at 1. That's how I think it works. So basically this minion will never die when attacking in. If you have enough stats to compensate for it. If at some point you don't have the attack to put onto the health to survive. Your dominion just dies. Uh, really cool card actually. Wow. There is so much to so think about. It's only when it attacks. It's not when it gets attacked into. So keep that in mind if you taunt this for example with a module. But super interesting effect. A bit confusing. But it means that this gets like maximum maximum value. If you like value this is the card for you. Because you will always get the best possible trait that you can get. Uh, which is sick. I like it a lot. I'm gonna give it a free true sure, i'm gonna give it a free because early on it might not even be good if this attacks into with 12 attack and the one health into let's say a 10 10 minion it's gonna deal a total of it's gonna shift 10 uh, attack to health it's gonna deal a total of two attack so uh yeah i would deal two two damage to a 10 10 minion early on <laughs> relentless sentry is a tier 3 undead five attack one health avenge four gain taunt and reborn again a lot of like high attack low health stat lines that we've seen um avenge four is a lot uh it's like the tier 2 undead pirate um and then it gains taunt and reborn which is kind of weird this this just gets this mid combat after more stuff dies i don't know it's it might have some applications it seems interesting but nothing crazy right i'm just gonna give this a two i don't think it's bad i don't think it's good no actually it's bad because it's a five one it doesn't even start off with reborn it might just get zero value actually i'm gonna give this the one the first one star card is dropped i just don't see how like sure sometimes it gets stunned reborn then it's okay but even then no i don't like it sore loser is a tier free undead what a name it's a one four your undead have extra attack equal to your tier so it has a bad stat line itself but it gets the attack bonus 
Uh, from your tavern tier, so if you're tier 3, you find this early, this will be a 4-4, your other undeads have plus 3 attack, which is good early on, because undeads reborn, you know, they come back the, with the extra attack, that's why undeads have the attack scaling with Anubarak and the other Battlecry core that gets plus attack to undeads, uh, but it's not something you keep, I guess, because late game, sure, let's say you're tier 5, you get plus 5 attack on all your undeads, might as well just have it permanently, because if this dies, the attack goes away. Uh, it's good though, I think it's decent to have early, it's going to be really strong. I'm going to give it a, a 4, honestly. This could stick around for quite a bit, um, but I don't think this card can win you the game. Champion of Primus is a tier 5 and dead. holy, what an absolute unit. 1-8 stat line, all of these stat lines are so like very polarizing, not evenly matched, it's like super high attack or super high health. Uh, Avenge too, so more Avenge, your undead have plus one attack for the rest of the game, so I guess this is gonna replace like Anubarak, and this is what I talked about, permanent scaling. This is a lot better. Avenge too, also pretty easy to achieve, like you just have a lot of random shit die, uh, and you'll have permanent attack for the rest of the game. It scales mid-combat as well, so mid-combat you're gonna get those attack buffs. Uh, I think it's pretty good. I like this one a lot. I think um, it is way better than Anubarak. It's it's tier 5. Uh, because Anubarak only gives you plus 1 attack once on death rattle. You could give a reborn that it's twice. It also stacks with Baron. This can easily trigger multiple times a turn already as soon as you get it. Without needing extra uh, luck or additional cards, right? As long as you have some, some cards on a board that will die for you. So I'm gonna give this a 4. I think it's a pretty good scaling for Undead. Surf and Surf is a tier 1 Naga beast. I think this is the first tier 1 unit we see revealed and also the first dual tribe minion we see revealed. Uh, 1 attack, 1 health, really bad set line. Spellcraft, give a minion death rattle, summon a 2 2 crab. That makes up for it. So it's essentially a 3 3, right? Uh, which is decent or a good stat line even for a one drop. I don't know if it has any other applications besides that. I guess late game this is a pretty good spellcraft to like cycle because it's a bumper. You can just put a 2 2 death rattle on any card and then once it dies, maybe it can bump a shield the crap that it summons. Uh, other than that, it just seems gimmicky. It just kind of whatever early, you know? I'll give this a 2. Just a 2. Oh, <laughs> you can actually stack the crabs on the lava lurker and then. It will just, it dies and it summons like a full board of crabs at the end, like a rat pack. It's kind of funny. Seaborn Summoner is a two, tier 2 Naga Elemental. Uh, it's a 2-4 spellcraft. Choose a minion, add a minion of its type to the tavern. So it is not immediate tempo. This is a spellcraft that might not do anything for you. That's kind of useless. It's a 2-4 itself, which is okay. Uh, but it could help you find cards. It can also be bad. Let's say you use this on a Naga, you get a Naga in the tavern. You still have to spend the money to buy it. Maybe it's a bad Naga. Maybe it's a triple. Maybe it's good. Uh, but it seems super situational, super slow. I'm gonna give this a 1, I think. I, I don't think the upside is worth it. Withered Spearhide is a tier 3 undead quill bore. Uh, it's a 2-2. Two -two. Reborn, death rattle, get a blood gem. So I was about to say really bad stat line, but it gives you two blood gems a turn guaranteed. So we already saw um, a quillborn on tier two. You have to flow the gold to get two blood gems. This requires nothing, gets you two blood gems. It's stacks with Baron and it's an undead reborn. So it's really good if you get attack buffs going. It just has a lot of things going for it. I think this is a really good card actually, even though it seems rather slow. Uh, I think it's a value machine and getting two gems a turn when you're playing Quillbor really valuable. It's not like it, it can be pretty tough to get a lot of gem generation going. So I'm going to give this a four. Here we have Dreadbeard, a tier three demon pirate. A demon pirate is kind of a funny uh, combination here. It's a four four at the end of your turn, deal one damage to your hero and get a gold coin. Uh, so you generate money for the sacrifice of losing one health. I think that's interesting. I think I like it. There used to be a tier 3 card that just on death rattle gave you a coin. It was a 3 free. This is a 4-4. Four four, so you get plus 1 plus 1 stats for the trade-off of having to take the extra damage. Uh, also, this doesn't stack with like a, a Baron. It does stack with the 5 drop. I guess the end of turn 1, I suppose. But you would also take the extra damage. I think it's okay. I think it's greedy for sure. Greedier than the coin even. Uh, I'm gonna give this a 2. I, I don't know if you want to necessarily be playing this. Package Feldrake is a tier 4 demon dragon. It has... It's a 0-1 stat line. Okay, insane stat line once again. Battlecry, consume 3 minions in the tavern. 
to gain their stats. Okay, that means that the stat line is gonna improve. It, it, it reminds me of demons, obviously, that's why it has the dual tag where you consume the tavern. Really good synergies if you have like a buff tavern. We saw a 7 drop yesterday that gives plus 10 plus 10 to the to all minions in the tavern, which is nuts. It, it doesn't depend, like if you get unlucky for a 4 drop, even if you eat 3 bad things, I think on average the stat line is still gonna be okay. Uh, I, I don't think I can do the math. I don't know what the average stats are that you can get in a tavern on, on tier 4. Anyway, uh, it, it's going to be okay, but that's it. Then it does nothing for the rest of the game. It has a battle cry, which I think there is like quests or there's ways that you can trigger it. Yeah, I think uh, with Bran, if you are playing a composition that each shop, let's say you're already playing Felbad, really strong to get on the board. I'm going to give this a 4. I think most of the time it's already good tempo and I think it has a, a way to spike you really quickly. Also insane triple to hit I think. If you have a pair on this and you triple it, damn. Reminds me of Battle Monster a little bit. Mono North. It's a tier 5 undead demon. Uh, 1 attack, 10 health. Again dude, what is up with these stat lines? Venomous. Uh, after the skills a minion and survives, gain its maximum stats. What? What the fuck? This just kills something? And then eats all of its stats. The issue is that it needs to survive. So it's venomous, it guarantees skill something if it doesn't go into a divine shield. So that's already an upside, right? You just have a venomous card. But if it does survive the trade, so you will need to buff this health some way or the other. Or just buff the card itself. It takes all of those stats. Just give it a divine shield, right? If you give this divine shield, it kills something. It doesn't take damage. It eats the entire card this this is ridiculous i think this is uh super strong i'm gonna give this a five this seems like the perfect like one of the best tech cards that you can play if you can buff it or if you can put it give it a divine shield and even if you can't even if it doesn't survive it still kills a card yeah this seems nuts holy mechanized a gift horse <laughs> it's a tier five mech beast i don't know why i keep laughing at like every name and every artwork it's just so good uh, it's a four four death rattle summon two 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 mech horses uh, can we see those mech horses? I wanna, I wanna see them. Uh, with Death Rattle, summon a 1-1 one, one, a mecha po I wanna see the mecha ponies as well. Uh, but yeah, we saw... I think there's like a tier 5 mech in the, the tavern right now, which has like taunt divine shield, summon 3 more taunt divine shields, right? Uh, it reminds me of that. It's just a Death Rattle, summons more Death Rattles, summons more Death Rattles. Really good if you play anything with Avenge. Let's say you're playing on dead or anything that requires a little shit to die. Amazing. It's also just good if you're up against mechs because you play a lot of bumpers. This summons a lot of small things that can bump in, in things. It can also remove um, Venomous really well. Uh, if the 1-1s one go into a Venomous card, Venomous is gone. So the little tokens that it summons has a lot of different applications. Um, then again, it needs stuff, right? It's just this thing. If you do the math quickly on how big it is, it's a 13-13. It's, no, it's actually a 10 10. I thought it summoned three uh, horses instead of two. Because <laughs> it is a 4 4, it summons 6 6 in mech horses, and then that summons a 3 3 in mecha ponies. <laughs> Uh, so set line is okay-ish for, I mean, pretty good for a 5 drop. But yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be on the, the decent side. I'm going to give it a free. I think it's good, annoying, but I don't think it's going to be op oppressive by any means. Transmuted Bramble Witch. It's a tier 5 elemental quill bore, 4-4. Four, four. When this attack set the defender stats to 3-3 free, free, once per combat. So right off the gate, this gets a free kill, uh, basically, which is also insane. It reminds me of, you know, this 5 drop. Uh, difference is that it will, you know, not gain any of the stats, so it's it's worse, right? You can buff this up, sure, uh, and then it kills something for free. Still has most of its stats, it just loses free health. Uh, it's it's again a good counter against like anything massive, but there's enough tech cards already. Again, this seems like a, a tech card with extra applications, which is generally speaking really good. And it upgrades to twice per combat if it's triple. I didn't check. Does it do it here as well? Also twice per combat. Holy shit! So a golden Manorov and a golden um, Bramble Witch are insane, actually. They get some... If, if they attack again, they would have to attack a second time, which doesn't always happen. Uh, but it could be insane. I'm gonna give this a 4. I don't think it's quite a 5. I think it's really good. Um, but again, this can just get traded. The issue or the big difference is, as well is that a card can go in here and kill this without getting zero value. This still has the Venomous. So if a card goes in here oh, and kills the Manorov, it still gets its value. So it's just a little bit worse. Relentless Morghul is a tier 6 undead Murloc. Uh, it's a 5-4 Venomous. 
Avenge 4 gain reborn. So it's just the Venomous on tier 6 that sometimes has reborn, so it goes a second time. Uh, I think it's it's just a tech card. I don't know what to say about this. Sure, it's a Murloc, it can be scaled up, but it's on 6. Do you really have the time to scale it up still? Maybe. I don't know. Not a big fan of this. I'm going to give it a free, because sure, in the end game, you might see a couple of these. Uh, but you already have better tech cards on tier 5, I think. Uh, I, I would at least call these better tech cards, because this can kill something and then kill multiple things with the extra stats that it gained, you know? Uh, and this can kill 2, sure, if the reborn triggers, but eh. Eh. And now we're gonna go to the tier 7 minions, dude, this video is already really long, but I did not expect so much new, cool, interesting stuff, uh, honestly. So these are only accessible in the uh, anomaly where you have tier 7 minions in the lobby, and also with the new hero, which discovers a tier 7. And there are 5 copies of each tier 7 minion, okay, so there's not that many copies of uh, any of them, so that's gonna be really interesting. Argent Brogard, we already saw, but it's a 1-1. Battle cry set this minions attack and health to the highest in the battlefield. Uh, I don't think this one was really good. I'm gonna give this a 2 because you already need an existing board, right? You already need to be big. If you find this early, you're not gonna get a lot of value out of it. It's like a good end game, I guess, unit if you need a filler spot. But how often do you need a filler spot? Very often you already have better cards or you already have like really good synergy on your board so uh, it's situational it stacks with brand which is good but yeah just a two king varian tier 7 nine, nine. when you sell this discover two tier six minions okay so this is not something that you need to like build a comp or anything but if you find this early you sell it two tier six minions could have good synergy could be i mean we saw some really strong tier six cards right so tripling into this you basically triple into two six jobs uh, and you, I guess you get extra gold for it, you know. Uh, pretty good. Actually, uh, I, I like it. I'm going to give this a 4. Yeah, I wonder if they did this on lower tiers. Let's say you have a 6 drop. If you sell it, you get two 5 drops. Or a 5 drop, you sell it, you get two 4 drops. Would that be good? I think so. Moira Bronzebeard. Wait, Moira, the Overwatch hero? Uh, it's a free... It's free 9, also a neutral. Your better cries and death rattles trigger twice. They're just Bran, Baron combined. While Bran and Baron are 5 drops, so you need to... Uh, like go two taverns higher just to combine it that seems uh, tough to make work honestly also what board needs both battle cries to trigger twice and death rattles like if you play murlocs you need battle cries twice death rattles not really i guess sometimes it seems like an overkill core you know you could find this early but you basically mainly are going to make use of the battle cry effect or the death rattle effect either i think there's not that many compositions that make good use of both so i'm gonna give this a two uh, it's a 3-9 neutral. I think for a 7 card, it needs to be super game-changing. It needs to be super good because we already have good cards on tier 5 and, and 6 that skill your board. So, uh, I don't think this is impactful enough. Papa Bear. Uh, we saw this one already as well. It's a 12-12 Death Rattle Summon 3 Mama Bears, which is ridiculously strong if you play uh, Banana Slama. Uh, the Mama Bears will also buff each other. Uh, I think this has loads of good applications, but it's a little bit weird because if this is the last thing to die, you have mom bears that don't really get value from other things on your board summoning, if that makes sense. Uh, if this dies though, and then you summon like the card from hand, it gets plus 15, plus 15. I think there is some cool stuff with this. Uh, I think uh, it is probably worth the tier 7 tag. I'm going to give this a 4, because if you play a beast board, you probably want this most of the time, right? Like it's one of the better death roll beasts that you can play. Um, for sure. Champion of Sargeras is a 10 10. It's a demon as well. Uh, minions in the tavern have plus 10 plus 10. We saw this one as well revealed already. Uh, which plus 10 plus 10 in the shop. Good tempo. If you find this early, you will have a really strong board. Again, there is ways to eat the shop with demons. You know, you have a lot of synergies there. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure what to rate. I'm going to give it, I think, a, a 4. Like, if you get this early, you should get really strong. Also, with max and magnetic, really good. So it does even more synergies than I was thinking of. Uh, yeah, Recurring Nightmare is a tier 7 undead, 5-5, uh, five, five, so not a great set line. Death give a friendly undead. Death summon a Recurring Nightmare. Like, if this dies, goes onto an undead, that undead dies, then it goes onto another undead. It can keep cycling, but you can also get really unlucky that this goes onto another undead, and then that one dies last. And if that dies last, then this is not gonna jump onto any other. So maybe this only gets, like, one summon, or maybe even zero. So it seems like there's a lot of RNG involved here and in where it jumps and how much value you get. Uh, with attack buffs, it's really good, of course. If this is like 20 attack, you're going to keep summoning 20 attack minions. So this seems a bit RNG heavy. Reminds me of Leapers. Leapers, same thing. If your Leapers go in the back and you get no value, 
you could just lose the fight. It stacks with Baron. So I guess you can play Undead Baron comp with this. Just keep summoning recurring nightmares. Oh my god. Yeah, there's some real cheesy um, Leaper-esque stuff that you can do here. But Leaper was a 3 drop. This is a 7 drop. But the good thing is that you can just build your Undead board, keep scaling, and then in the end, find this, play this on the board, and it's just gonna be good. So I'm gonna give it a 4. I think it's a really good ending unit. I think there's a lot of potential, but also Laurel potential, so I don't think I can give it a 5. Captain Sanders, a tier 7 pirate. Hell yeah, it's a 7. 7 7 better cry make a friendly minion golden i'm a little bit disappointed sadly uh, i mean it's like a reno hero power pretty good uh, it's also make any friendly okay so it's not just a pirate but it does remind me of like the naga spellcraft that can make a minion golden for the turn uh, which was pretty good on tier 6 if you get this early you still gotta find another card that's worth making golden so uh, I think it's good, but again, situational? I'm gonna give it a free, because this is a two-card combo. You just need a second card to find to make good use of this. But it's good. It's like a Renew Hero power, essentially, right? Tide Oracle Morgul, a tier 7 Murloc, 110 stat line, poisonous. We've seen this before. Uh, when this attacks and kills a minion, give its maximum stats to a minion in your hand. So it's it's very similar to a lot of cards that we saw already, kind of meshed together. Uh, so it kills a minion, but it gives the stats to a minion in your hand, which could be this is actually insane. If it kills something, it doesn't need to survive. Let's say you kill a massive 100-100 unit. Suddenly you get plus 100, plus 100 on a minion in your hand. That's that's not nothing. That's actually insane. I'm, I'm going to give this a 5. It seems super good. Because most of the time you will get value. This will kill something. There, I just don't like that there's so much more Venomous in the game now. They, they seem to really add a lot of like cards that insta-kill. At the moment. Granite Guardian is a tier 7 elemental. 1-7. Dude, this... I swear to God. Someone must have had, like, an idea to just make every stat line one attack or one health. <laughs> uh, taunt, whenever this is attacked, reduce the attacker's health to 1. What? So, anything that you attack this taunt with goes to 1 health and just dies, right? Uh, the thing is, if it has high enough attack, this just dies in one shot. You would need to buff this up still. So, you need to find a way to buff this. Um, but it's a taunt that can easily get a lot of value. Also get no value if you're up against max. If someone has a big deflectable, reducing it to one health doesn't matter, it's just gonna one-shot this. So, it seems really good at first, but the more I think about it, the more I think there is, like, ways to counter it. You could remove the taunt, keep in mind, there's a card that removes taunt. I don't know how valuable that is, but it plays around people putting their stuff like deflectable first. I'm gonna give this a free, because as juicy as it seems, it could like wipe an entire early board, like people early, if they face this, you might not have an answer, you might just lose two or three cards. Uh, but later on, this seems a little bit too easy to play around. There's Venomous everywhere, there's like Leroy's obviously still. Um, see which are, 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 Zargi, see which Zargira, uh, <laughs> tier 7 Naga, 4-5 Spellcraft, use a different minion in the tavern to get a copy of. Yeah, you just get a free minion every turn. Uh, which is good, you can get triples that way, um, but this can either snowball really quickly or be too slow when you die, because like, let's say in three turns you get like three cards, but they were not amazing, you're dead because someone else found a 7 drop that's way more impactful, right? Um, I think it's super highly hit or miss. I'm gonna give this a free because also there's like a anomaly where everyone gets to buy a free card every turn, right? This is basically dead kind of yeah just a free obsidian ravager a tier 7 dragon 4-4 four, four. whenever this attacks deal damage equal to its attack to the target and an adjacent minion so it doesn't really lose health right if it attacks it just deals its attack it doesn't actually attack uh, and an adjacent minion so it's kind of like a cleave kind of like a wildfire essentially or, or a half hydra whatever you want to call it uh, i think there was a card that did this already uh i forgot the name but it was a four drop dragon that whenever it attacked it's dealt free damage first and then attacked in. It's kind of like that, but instead of just dealing free damage first and then attacking in, it just deals its damage first and doesn't continue to attack in. So this is really good because it, it could just not get traded and then it just deals, deals so much free damage to the board. This is insane. Or wait, maybe I think it deals its attack damage and then still attacks in. Right? Whenever this attacks, deal damage equal to its attack to the... I think it still attacks in after. Not 100% sure, but I think it does. So it can still die on the first hit. If you're up against a Divine Shield, for example, it deals its attack to a Divine Shield, then attacks in, it could still die. But it's still a really good card. I think I'm going to give it a 4. Uh, none of these are 5 drops quite, because all of them have, like, player counterplay. Uh, and also need other, like, scaling to get good and stuff like that. Because this is only a 4-4. Four, four. 
not that impactful. Uh, but again, if you get them online, they're some of the best cards you can have in the game. The Boom Mobile. <laughs> it's a tier 7 mech. 12-12. I love this. Uh, magnetic, Reborn, Divine Shield, Taunt, Wind Fury. It just has everything. And Magnetic, so you can put this onto anything. Find a, a good mech, slap this on. Suddenly it has Reborn, it has Divine Shield, it has Taunt, so you can remove the Taunt though. Uh, and Wind Fury. So I don't think... Wait, 4 Reaper? If 4 Reaper is still in the game, you slap this on? Dude, insane actually insane i really like this a tier 6 magnetic this has to be five i'm gonna give it five even though i know it doesn't scale it doesn't do a whole lot it's just such a big spike and such a good card to have on your playing max sanguine champion is a tier 7 quillborn 9 free stat line Battlecry and Death Rattle, your Blood Gems give an extra plus one plus one this game the stat line is not amazing giving plus one plus one i mean you have three drops and four drop Quillbores, right? They give you plus one attack and plus one health. This has death rattle on itself, so every turn it will get plus one plus one. But you have a four drop that gives plus one stat line on death rattle. So this seems pretty slow for a seven drop. Uh, honestly, I think by the time, like if this dies three times, you get plus three plus three on your gems, sure. But aren't you dead by then? Because your seven drop is a nine free. I think I'm going to give this two, even though this is like a combination of both and better. It seems too slow. Amalgadon is back. So it used to be one of the strongest six drops in the game that you know, everyone played in the end game. Um, but now it's a 6 drop. And in case you don't know what it did, uh, it's a 6-6 six, six battle cry for each different main type you control. Randomly adapt. So it's a payoff for Menagerie. You play Menagerie and this guy has all types. It can get Poison, Divine Shield or Venomous in this case. So it's a little bit worse. All of the random keywords. Uh, and it has all types. So you can buff it with any buff that you find. It works in any composition. You can give it a Divine Shield. You can give it anything that you want uh, in life. So it is, I think most endgames are still going to play on Magadon. I think it's still going to be one of the best cards because you can literally do anything with it. It is 7 though, so it's a bit slower. It's harder to find. You can't just find it relatively early and, and skill it. But um, I'm a bit worried that most endgames will still have Amalgadons on the board. Again, there's so many good deck cards on 7 though. I think uh, a lot of these cards can be on final board. So maybe this has to compete with the better 5 drops and 6 drops and 7 drops that we saw. Uh, so for that reason alone, I'm going to give it a 4 and not quite a 5, even though I'm really tempted. Uh, just because, they're, you know, things are pretty stacked right now. Uh, he has a fight. So here are 49 minions that are removed from the game. I'm not going to go over all of these because it's way too many and I would just be rambling. But feel free to pause the video uh, and it might explain why some new cards are introduced. Now there's some minion updates as well. I'm going to go over these pretty quickly because this video is actually insanely long. Wow. Summoner, mainly the tripled version is changed. Instead of summoning two Eternal Knights, it's just going to summon a Golden Eternal Knight. Spell skill Honcho can now also buff itself. It gives two friendly Murlocs instead of give two other friendly Murlocs looks plus one health. King Burgurgle is buffed but also nerfed. It doesn't have the death rattle anymore to give Murlocs plus two plus two so in combat it's worse uh, but it is a six four that now gives Murlocs plus two plus three so it's better during the buy phase. Young Murkai is back. The stat line is a little bit reduced but now it's, it still gives adjacent minions uh, their battle crash trigger, not just the minion to the left. So the nerf was reverted. Body Elemental, the stat line was changed and it's put on tier three from tier two. Uh, it's now a 2-5 on tier 3 and it gives friendly elementals plus 1 plus 2 instead of plus 1 plus 1 whenever you play one. Also for elemental has a text only change. Lava Lurker is a small change so that way the uh, effect isn't consumed if you use a spellcraft that doesn't actually do something. Banner Boar went from a 3 drop to a 4 drop and the stat line was buffed. Piloted Whirlotron used to copy a friendly minion's death rattle and now copies a different friendly minion's death rattle. And that is it, we finally made it through the video. Uh, thank you for watching all of this, I hope you enjoyed me uh, taking a look at these cards and I hope you're just as excited to play these as me. It is an actual massive update, I am super excited and uh, I hope you guys will join me when I play this in the first couple of days. I might stream it here on YouTube, I might also stream it on Twitch a bit. I'll see where I want to stream it, I don't know yet honestly, uh, but thank you for being here uh, and have a good day, bye bye.